I opened the charts um, and I just see minus, I think, 10.5 million. So, okay, maybe I shouldn't have dropped out and maybe I should have listened to my parents and my friends and for the shift of momentum and then take the buy. Mm -hmm. Same thing with the sales, so always wait for your shift of momentum. Mm -hmm. Hey, what's up guys, it's Kukubi Tambani here from Top Trader, South Africa. And you guys know what this is all about, bringing you guys the most talented and inspiring individuals in the game right now. And today I am joined by a trader who's been in the game for a minute or so. I'm joined by Ruan Landsberg. Oh, nice to nice to meet you and yeah. obviously thanks for having me. Yeah, thank you. Hope you guys me. enjoy my, my journey and yeah. my story. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm looking forward to it. I, I, was, I was preparing for this interview and I must say that uh, I'm really looking forward to this conversation right now that we're going to have and then I'm, I'm really hoping that people are going to hear mm -hmm. your story and they're going to be so inspired by the work that you've done and the work that you're doing currently and all that. So but obviously we've got to go all the way back <laughs> to where it started because people, yeah, to the beginning because people need to know, hey, <laughs> where does Ruan really come from and then like where you're originally from? I'm from Polokwane, Limpopo, yeah. Uh, Limpopo, I yeah. went to school there, yeah. Oh, yeah. Grew up there, yeah. went to school there yeah, yeah. and finally left there for, for University of Pretoria. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so, so you're at UP. Yeah, I started at UP. I studied so, entrepreneurship for about four years. Okay, did didn't you finish? Didn't finish, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. So yeah. the plan was never to finish. The plan was literally just to go there and okay. obviously oh, so find wait, my passion. Wait, so you went to school to not to finish? To not finish. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah. So it sounds crazy to a lot of people, but for me it was like, if I stay in my hometown, it's like this. Oh, yeah. I know the opportunities and you know okay. the people so yeah i had to go out there and actually meet new people mm -hmm. and and just the experience behind university i think is a must for everyone mm -hmm. um because i won't be sitting here if i didn't go to university all the people that i met all the opportunities yeah. that i got was from from university yeah okay so, so so i'm guessing you heard about trading at university as well actually yeah <laughs> so we actually started like a whole different businesses and companies oh, and stuff. Oh, okay, yeah. So we tried a lot of things. At that time, I went to, when I went to university, actually, mm -hmm. I was working in security industry. Okay. Um, so I was doing security in Howie Santon. Oh, yeah. So I was doing site management for, for all the, the offices. Yeah, yeah. So I had to wake up at 3 a.m., drive there. Sure. Then do that, then go to classes. Yeah. So which I started doing not classes later on. <laughs> um, because it was just so much happening. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, finally, Started a few businesses, obviously everything failed at that time. Yeah, yeah. What, what, are, some, what, what are some of the businesses that you started? <laughs> like the one, the one thing was like <laughs> that we want to put on, on all the people. So as soon okay. as the heart rate spikes, then yeah. alarm will go off. Okay. And we had, yeah, we had so many plans yeah. of different apps and oh, then yeah, yeah. technology <laughs> and so but, many but different the, things. But this was back in what, like 20, 2014? But yeah. that was very really like ahead of different, your business. Yeah, so different the technology time. wasn't there. Actually, yeah. I started with entrepreneurship when I was six. Okay. Um, we actually lived on a farm and I started planting um, tom tomatoes. Yeah. So I started selling it to the locals and oh. that's my first like business sure. <laughs> that wow. I actually created. So you go way back. Way, way yeah. back. And yeah, from there I started, um, they actually wanted to throw me out of school because they thought I was stealing. Okay. <laughs> I used to run to the tuck shop and then yeah. I buy like cool drinks and chips and stuff and okay. then I resell it next door <laughs> for like two rand extra because yeah. now I don't have to stand in line oh, and it yeah. was a quick fix. And oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I found my parents and they're like, yeah, but this kid's just making money. So yeah. That's all he is. And yeah. So I always knew I was, I was going to be a businessman and I okay. loved the success behind everything. So mm. I love creating something and make it a success yeah, yeah, yeah. and then move on to the next thing. So for me, it's not always about the money. It's about creating something that I feel passionate about. Mm. Um, and that's where we obviously found trading. Mm. But back in that time, it was all about the cash. Yeah. You see this guy sitting on top of a Mercedes car with cash on the yeah, yeah. thing. And my friend Quentin, which I also made on university. Okay. And he said to me, look at this guy sitting, he's 19 years old, sitting with all this cash on a car. We need to, we need to go to his classes. Yeah. So that time, after paying my university, my car, everything, I got about 2K out okay. um, to survive, to obviously have fun with my friends and mm. everything. And yeah, so we had to pay 5k i think for the classes oh yeah 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 so we if you actually go back on my facebook you'll yeah. see me selling my watch my tablet Jeez. everything that i had for university i sold okay 
Um, no, but like, was was this like your initial, like your first encounter with the market, or I, was it? I didn't even know what forex is. Yeah, at this oh, time. you didn't know nothing. I haven't watched a single video <laughs> yeah. and everything. Quentin just showed. Quentin was always on YouTube. Yeah. So he was just showing me this this thing, and I was like, "What is this?" Yeah. Like we that time, it was not as as familiar as, as it is now. Okay. So then I was like, "What is trading?" And so we had to save up for the class, obviously, before we went to the class. Mm -hmm. Then I started YouTubing the whole time, what's trading, what's trading. Yeah. And I just fell in love with the patterns and yeah. how you can actually predict where the world currencies are going. And mm. that was so interesting to me. Mm. So it wasn't about the money initially. And yeah. then, obviously, it became more about the money later on when yeah. I was a little bit older. Of course. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So, so you, go, you go to this class, you pay about, was it 5,000? 5,000 each, yeah. Yeah, each. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah. <laughs> So you got it was a lot, lot of money. Yeah. My parents were like, what are you doing? <laughs> like, just stick to university. Yeah. And if you know my parents, like my parents are Afrikaans people. Okay. So they grew up in a form of a traditional yeah. life. So yeah. you do the same thing, you follow the system. Yeah. So for telling them I'm selling everything to do it. My, my brother actually gave me a phone two days before we went to the class. Okay. Um, a brand new, I think, Samsung E71. Okay. Those phones were still something. Yeah. <laughs> I actually saw that phone two days later yeah. to fund my account. Wow. He wasn't the happiest <laughs> brother ever. Hi, my name is Damien Bunce and I'm the Chief Trading Officer at XNES. I want to talk to you about some of the advancements we've made in our product and our services that have propelled us to the number one position as a broker in terms of volume and active traders. We strive to create the optimal marketplace for our clients, and that means deep and rich liquidity. It means low and stable spreads at any time of the day or night. It also means minimizing slippage at all possible moments in time. By the end of 2022, we plan to double our investment in our infrastructure, our people, and our product line in order to keep us exceptionally competitive and continue to add fantastic advancements for our clients. Reaching the number one position was just the first step for us. There is plenty more to come. Uh, okay, yo, so okay, so you go to the class, and after the class, what happens then? Like, so at that time, obviously, there wasn't so many strategies and technicals okay. and stuff we have available today, which, yeah. which I know today about. Um, so that time, everyone was trading trend lines. Mm. Um, so I, I learned trend lines, and this guy was showing me trend lines, and it's like, just draw a trend line, and it's simple. Yeah. And now I'm sitting there with zero experience. So if you have experience in the market now and you just draw a trend line, you're like, oh, but there's more to it. There's support, yeah. there's FIB, there's everything. Mm -hmm. So that's almost like, I'm going to kill it. <laughs> I'll draw enough trend lines the whole day. So we, were, we went back to the race and mm -hmm. the guy said, no, we have to come back the next day. Okay. So day one, we only did um, theory. Okay. So now I was like thinking, okay, well, we're only doing theory for 5K. Yeah. The next day we learned like the strategy, if you oh, want to yeah. put it that way. And we're drawing trend lines for six months straight. Sure. Just sitting in our room till four o'clock, just drawing trend lines and going okay. mad. People will come into our room like 4 a.m. just seeing us drawing trend lines and yeah. going mad about it. And yeah, for six months, um, we, we demoed, we tested the market out, and then mm. we, we finally went live after about six months. Okay. Just due to capital reasons. Oh, yeah, we okay. didn't have the money then to, yeah, to yeah. fund the accounts. Yeah. Okay. Do you remember how much was that first deposit? Our first deposit was, I put in 3K, Quentin put in about 2,500 Rand. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. then from there, went up to 34,000, I promise you, in probably a week. Sure. But in the course, I didn't learn risk management, obviously. Okay. <laughs> didn't learn yeah. stop losses. Yeah. Didn't learn interest rates. Yeah. So I was sitting on 34K about 12 days in, and all of a sudden, Australian dollar, it was still an all USD trade, yeah. went uh, interest rates. So that time, news was like 1,500 points. Today, yeah. it's like 300 points, yeah, and yeah. then just pulls back and goes yeah. the other way. And I, I went from 34K, I was in a drawdown of about probably $1,500. And then we started selling more stuff to put more money in, so the account can with 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 Are you all selling the more stuff. What are you talking about? What were you selling? We're selling. We sold my PlayStation. I sold my <laughs> laptop. We saw <laughs> Quentin actually sold this watch. I think yeah. um, I sold my Fitbit thing that yeah. I had for the rugby. And okay, uh, we started selling everything. So we had about forty four k in the account, mm -hmm. and it just went more down and more down and more down. And that's after I found my parents telling them I'm killing it. Yeah. I'm gonna leave university <laughs> tomorrow. Um, I've made 34k. Everybody knows that story. If you start yeah. trading, you're just so happy yeah. and excited, and you're finding everyone like going yeah. to the bar, paying for drinks for everyone, <laughs> of money you haven't withdrawn yet. <laughs> and yeah, we ended up blowing that account, 44,800, I think. 
Yeah, that's only my account. Quentin took his money out. He's a safe oh, guy. Oh, yeah. so he took he, his he took money his out. He took his profit out. He oh, had yeah. like 5k profits in oh, the yeah. bank, and I had 44k running, and yeah, blew oh, everything. He lost it all. So then we had to go back, okay. and that's when we started working in Loftus. Um, so we used to work behind the bars there. Yeah. And the cricket in Centurion. So okay. then we started working double work, and yeah. so he was also in a bursary. Um, okay. So yeah, then we started taking all the money and started funding again. Again. <laughs> and, and then the process began. The process began again. <laughs> so they call it the trader cycle of doom, yes. where you learn a strategy. Yeah. Yeah. You make it, then you fail, then you yeah. try a new strategy. Yeah, just and you like keep that. in that cycle. Just like that. <laughs> so then we went to a different course. We learned support resistance. Um, and we're like, this changes everything. Now yeah. we have trend lines, we have support <laughs> resistance. Now it makes more sense. Yeah. yeah, same thing happened. And yeah, went over for about four times. We, yeah. we just kept blowing accounts. In yeah. that time, we blew, blew about 12, 14 accounts. Sure. And it, money we didn't have. <laughs> and yeah, it took about probably a year of, of hard work. Mm -hmm. But I don't think people always get it. It's like we we worked hard. Everybody that was in the race with us, mm. they were coming 5 a.m., we're sitting there trading. Mm. We'll be there 6 a.m., we'll be there trading. Mm. So even on a demo account, you'll go to bed and I'll, I slept on a bed, he slept on a couch in my room. Okay. So then you'll go to bed and I'll watch the charts on a demo account. We made no money just yeah. sitting there and sure. watching the market. We had this big whiteboard um, where I write down, okay, you're still looking yeah, for sales, yeah. or you're still looking for sales, you're mm. GBP looking for buys. Mm. So, yeah, we did that the whole time. So we basically treated our, it as a business, okay. and we knew we had to put in work to actually make it make it happen. Mm, mm. Yeah. <laughs> sure, wow. <laughs> so you guys were just really like just living this life of mm -hmm. like, you know, we in this, we trading, even though it was demo, but like yeah. still, you were still like, in Traders the, lifestyle. Yeah. Exactly <laughs> my point. Yeah, okay, so okay, okay, so now you've blown about 12, 14 accounts. What, what's happening there right now? Did you ever feel like at any point you wanted to just give up? Yeah, there was in the beginning of like any, every, every day. Yeah. <laughs> I woke up, started, <laughs> almost cried instead of going, yeah. this thing, and then you just fell, fall back and you're yeah. like, okay, but this can change my life. Yeah, but what, what really kept you going though? I think, I think it's the, the motivation that... So this was a simple motivation that I actually put out that time. Okay. So I'm a very optimistic person. You'll see it in anything that I do. So mm -hmm. I said, if I lost 34K in two days, mm. if I was in the right direction, I would have made 34K. <laughs> so I would be sitting on 80K. <laughs> so that was what kept yeah. us going the whole time is the fact that I lost 34K in two days. Yeah. And we kept saying, well, if we're in the right direction one time, we can make 34K one time. <laughs> And then we can, we always said if you need, we get 100K, yeah. then we can start trading smaller because then we can make our 10K <laughs> a month. And that's, yeah. that's actually what happened. So okay. we had, um, we started building up consistency, mm -hmm. started taking $200 accounts to like $500 with Drew. Mm. So about a year and two months in, we started doing that. Okay. And all of our friends were always in our room, sitting and watching what we're doing. Okay. And we had friends that funded bigger accounts. I had my one friend, Andre, who's my best friend now. Um, and he, <laughs> he actually funded with like 20K and he made like, on the one gold trade, made like 15,000. It's like, okay. Yeah. And I went see him for like three weeks. And he comes <laughs> back and it's like, I need another trade. <laughs> we went back and forth with that and yeah. we just kept, that's when we learned risk management. Okay. And we started building up accounts. And then one week we, we took all our rent money, all our books money to mm -hmm. put into trading accounts. Mm -hmm. And we were behind, everybody in the race actually knows the story because they okay. were part of it. Okay. So we were behind on rent and yeah. our car payments and everything. Okay. And we left our jobs, we left university. Mm -hmm. And now we're sitting there and it's like, we need 100K. And yeah. I'm like, well, I'm going to make 100K. You just make me coffee the whole week. I won't sleep till we have 100K. Sure. So we're sitting on about 66,000 on Thursday. And then there was that uh, news about Zuma staying or going. Okay. So we actually had the rugby final. So now my coach is phoning both of us. Where are you? And I'm like, you go, you're captain. I'll go later. Yeah. And I have uh, two of my friends in there with their girlfriends. And we have five accounts open on that trade for yeah. Zuma to, to stay. Okay. So I tell him, something's going to happen. Use these other moves. Mm. So if that thing spikes, just eat close on all the accounts. <laughs> So everybody just freaks out. They're just sitting there because now it's 20K, 30K, and they're just chilling there. I'm like, just I take every phone and I close. Yeah. So we closed out 134K. So you guys made 134K right there. In five days. In five days. And yeah. that changed everything for yeah. us. So that time our rent was like two, two grand. Yeah. Um, so in, throughout that time, we sold this car. You had a PJ 206, okay. like with 300Ks on. Yeah. So we sold it for 30K cash. <laughs> throughout that time, so when you had and mm -hmm. yeah so we, we were we were fixed because we had like a years of car payments oh, um, yeah. rent food yeah. and everything yeah 
Sure. So, yeah, that's, that's actually our turning point because that stress of constantly have, having mm. to work to get, mm. just to get food on the table, to get all that going was, was a way. And yeah, from there we just moved and we went up and up and up and up. Yeah. How old were you guys when, when this happened? I think, yes, probably 21, 2021. 20, sure, yeah. yeah, yeah. I was, you're a year older than me, oh, so I was yeah. about 20, 21 years okay, old. Okay, yeah. So sure. coming from not, not knowing money and then yeah, having 100K, yeah. for me at that time <laughs> it was like 100,000. Yeah. I phoned my parents, I phoned everyone, I'm like, I have 100,000 in the bank. And we actually withdrew it in cash. This is the weirdest thing. Wait, the whole thing. I oh. promise you this. So we have our one friend, Ryan. So Ryan was actually part of us as well. Okay. He started trading with us that time. Yeah. Um, this, this little photo of us standing at Captic Bank Hatfield. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> he was, he's a big guy. Mm -hmm. Quentin was also a big guy. Yeah. And so I would withdraw. So okay. you can only do 20K cash at a time. Okay. So I'll take 20K cash out. I'll throw it in the bag. Okay. He was his, our getaway driver for yeah. if something happens. I mean, that's what's for the sketch place. <laughs> And we withdrew 120k. Sure. So we stacked it under our bed, and one day my brother comes in, he's like asking me for pay for something to pay for the food or something. Yeah. He just picks up my bed and he's like, "What are you doing with all this money <laughs> under your bed?" So I'm like, "I don't even know." Yeah. That time I just saw every, every trader having cash, yeah. and I needed to and see you, the and cash. And you thought this, this was it? Like this, this was is how it. it's done. <laughs> and I'm like, "Why do I have all this cash now?" Yeah. Like, what do you do with it? Then we yeah. just redeposit it into yeah, the bank. Yeah. yeah. Should you have a picture of that? Yeah, we actually have a picture can, of the cash you, on my table. Is it? Can you give us a picture? We'll put it on the screen. Yeah, so well, I'll throw it up. You actually see the cash lying there on my bed. <laughs> You'll see. Gee, yeah, so you'll you, see everything. So you guys are like 20, 21, you're young, you just love, like life is just moving at this From point. From there it started becoming fun because now yeah. it's like we left the job, we left university yeah. and we, we just decided to, to have fun. Okay, um, but I need to ask something. During that week of you making that 134k, yeah. I, do you think it was just a matter of luck or was there skill involved or what was it? I think there was, well, there's, there was a lot of skill involved. Okay but also a lot of research okay, um, involved yeah. in, so we were mostly trading fundamentally. Oh, yeah, so yeah. It was technical entries, but fundamental was the backbone of, of oh, our entries. Okay, yeah. So there was a lot of luck to it. I mean, it was, news events is 50-50. Yes. I mean, NFP is happening just now probably, and yeah, it can yeah. go up or down. Yeah. I mean, it's literally a 50-50. <laughs> yeah. So I knew Zuma was gonna stay because it's Zuma. <laughs> and it's, it was pretty simple for yeah. us to, of where the market is going. Oh, okay. um, so. It was a calculated gamble, if I have to put it that yeah. way. So yeah. it was luck, but it was also yeah, some, was some research oh, skill. Really, okay, no, nah, but that's good though. At least it wasn't just like a, a matter of you didn't know what you were doing, <laughs> yeah. you know, research was, was put into it. So I want to know, um, uh, so, okay, so I was, while I was doing research, I know I came across, uh, you spoke about buying crypto Mm. Uh, uh, specifically uh, Bitcoin and XRP, XRP. yeah, uh, when was this, like? There was, this was back in 2017. Okay, <clears> so <throat> wait, so the years had gone by or was it around the time that you guys were like had money? About two it? years in. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so yeah. we started off learning Bitcoin when all that, that scams were, was around, being like 3% a day. Okay. So we actually lost all our money in uh, this Bitcoin Thing we invested our money in so yeah. they said three percent a day and we're like yeah we're gonna kill it so we're still new to that space now and we mm. lost all our money pulled up again did it again with the same thing okay and then we started doing more research in cryptos um, yeah why don't we buy it ourselves so then we got this crypto xrp at that time it was zero point it was 10 cents of a rand okay okay so now we we got this this lady that understands cryptos okay. well that's what you said at the time yeah. she knows cryptos yeah and now we're asking about XRP because we want to buy this, this coin because it has good potential for long-term, quick payments, easy payments, cheap payments. And she's like, no, don't buy it. So we wanted to put in 100K that time. Yeah. So just to put it into perspective, XRP went 56 Rand. So that would have been a 5,600 point investment, sure. um, percentage investment. Yeah. So we actually gave out to our whole team. That time we, we had the community, trading co community for X Empire. Mm -hmm. So we actually told all of them to buy XRP at I think 12 cents then. Okay. So we made about 9,000% on sure. our trade. So we leveraged traded with, um, with a broker. Okay. And they actually closed down the positions and they banned trading because we were making so much money. Yeah. On 500 Rand accounts, we were running on like 300, 400K sure. in like two weeks. Yeah. So I was still in Mozambique um, on vacation. Okay. And I because I swiped one of my cards and I'm mm -hmm. like, it's not working. It says insufficient funds. And I'm yeah. like, it, this is impossible. 
and I phoned the girl that was staying um, staying at my house at that time, mm -hmm. and I'm like, what's happening to my cards? Yeah. And Quentin phoned me, it's like, all your money is in XRP. And I'm sitting there stressing <laughs> because I have no idea what's, what's happening to XRP. Yeah. I get home, I don't talk to one of them, yeah. and all he does is he literally came in with his PC, mm -hmm. he plugged it with the HDMI into my, into my screen in my mm -hmm. room, and he just said to me, just say thank you. <laughs> and, we walked out and we made, yeah, that was a big turning point. So you yeah. always say like, you, your first 10K is hard, but if okay. you can make 10K, you can make another 10K. Yeah, so and true. your first 100K and then it goes up and up. Mm. So that was our new breaking point to, to a new level, sure. is, is buying cryptos. Yeah. That's when we got into this space and started allocating all our profits into cryptos. Yeah, and yeah. that's actually how we bought most of our, our stuff as well. Sure, wow. Yeah. Gee, I can imagine, like, must have felt like a dream, though. Yeah, it was ridiculous, sitting with that time, cryptos wasn't big. Yeah, and it was nobody was yeah. believing in it, and now you're yeah. telling your family about, first you tell them you're a forex trader, then they're like, forex trader, are you serious? And yeah, yeah. now you're telling them you're making 9,000% on an investment, yeah. they're like, you know, this guy's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> so everybody just thought, it's just two crazy kids that's going to lose a lot of money. Yeah. Okay, so obviously, you, okay, so at this point, I'm, I'm aware that you, are, you understood your fundamentals at the time, yeah. right? But coming back to the charts, like, oh, were you, were you doing any technical trading? Mm. Oh, so you're busy with technical stuff? Yeah, like so what, what instruments were you basically using? The that most? time we were, were using support resistance, okay. um, your supply and demand zones and trend lines. Yeah. That was it. Yeah. So we used to wait for a breakout of the trend line, mm. a break back above resistance to take the buy, mm. or break below support, a uh, uh, break above support, mm. and then the trend line, then we'll do breakout trading. Yeah. So that's our only strategy we had. So we had this big zones, in mm -hmm. like thousand point zones. Yeah. So we'll wait sometimes two weeks for, sure. for six trades, and then yeah. we'll just be in like seven positions. Yeah. So we were more focused on longer term trading okay. positions. Yeah. Yeah, so obviously okay. now it's it's a little bit different the okay. amount of technicals yeah, yeah, i know yeah. now yeah yeah okay now that's good so what i'm aware of is that uh, you <coughs> are in the space of hedge funds currently yeah. that's where that's what you're passionate about mostly uh let's get into the hedge fund chat uh the conversation about hedge funds why does a hedge fund uh, explain it for those who just don't know at home what that because a lot of people we always mm -hmm. see our blue screens on instagram and stuff like that so yeah you just get into that all right so obviously my like i said my passion is to become the youngest billion dollar age fund manager mm. um so we're, i've been trading for for clients for about three years okay. um, but it's a whole different situation than than copy trading mm. so we don't do the classic copy trading i take 40 percent, you take 60 percent, or whatever mm. the split is so clients actually invest in a fund mm -hmm. everything co goes together mm -hmm. and we actually trade with the fact sheet yeah so we are a full transparent fund at the moment mm -hmm. so we we, see, we only see the main account okay so let's say there's five million in see five million yeah there can be 400 clients but we only see five million okay so each and every trade we execute if i execute on that account on 0 0.2 percent risk it executes 0 0.2 percent risk to all the clients yeah and as soon as i close the trade they get their profits i get my profits but it is full transparency. So you get this beautiful fact sheet and you can log in 12 a.m., 2 a.m. Yeah. and actually see what we do. Yeah. So the difference between retail, you have your retail traders, but all of us are mostly. Mm -hmm. And then you get your institutions. So there's still a big gap be between different institutions. Mm -hmm. So we're going into the H-Fund space. We're not 100% there yet. Mm -hmm. We're on the same model. We're in the same space. But the amount capital, we're not there yet. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what we do is we focus, we do 0.25% risk per trade. Um, we take max five trades per month. Mm. Um, so the capital is, you're looking at 1% risk per month. Mm. But our returns we are aiming at is 20 to 50% per year. Per year, yeah. yeah, yeah. So we are not targeting the guys that wants to do the 2,000% in a day. Yeah. We see <laughs> every you're day. targeting yeah. serious like funders, investors, investors so, basically things like that. Yeah. yeah, so the first attempt to that we actually did exactly that yeah so that's obviously the knowledge that i brought through is we did trade for clients at copy trading we did about 400 percent in that first month and mm. we were killing it um, and it was a good space for us to make okay. money but for me i had to do the mind shift mind shift of mindset shift of now i need to focus on the longer term mm. so if i keep doing the, the quick and easy 400 percent then i'm going to keep trading like that so i'm never going to be taken serious in the hedge fund space. Mm. So no hedge fund manager or hedge fund will 
bring up a billion dollar chat with a guy doing 400 percent a year yeah because your exposure to the market should be probably like 800 percent mm. understand so for us we want to move into the space of risking 0.25 percent per trade and then one percent per per month so we want to be taking serious in the space of we're focusing on the longer term mm. so it is less capital for us okay. so we we obviously take a knock as the trader mm. because now you know you have the knowledge to flip accounts to make 10k to 100k yeah. you have that knowledge and you can do it but as soon as you get your mindset into taking 10k to 100k you stay in that mindset mm -hmm. so you now have to shift your personal trading all everything you do to that mindset of 10 years from now yeah so that's what we do and that's what our focus is yeah. so it is tough at times if you see those guys making 100k and you're like i've been there and i can be there again <laughs> and obviously making 100 percent on our fund will be amazing that's yeah. retirement almost <laughs> But in the end, it's, it's still focusing on the clients. So we yeah. shift, shifted our, our focus from focusing on ourselves and the profits we make to focusing on our clients. Yeah. Um, and that's why everything what we do is when we, we moved hedge funds. Okay. I literally said to all my clients, we're moving to London. Yeah. It wasn't even difficult to get them over. It's like we're moving to London, everybody moves their money over because they're investing in me and mm. in what I do. Yeah, and yeah. they know that obviously that I care about their money mm. like it's my own money. Yeah. 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 No, but that's great, though. Um, so I want to talk about. We it was mentioned uh, there was a the, the, the ten million rand loss. The drawdown. Yeah, yeah, the drawdown. I want to talk about that. That whole period. What was going on? How did you get to that point and all that? Yeah. So yeah. So. So by two thousand and eighteen, I had um, one of my students, Francois de Plessis. Mm -hmm. um, so he did my course in beginning of two end of two thousand and seventeen, beginning twenty eighteen. So he actually just put in the work. I mean, it's a hard worker, um, much respect to him as well. And he started trading and he decided one day he's going to start an investment company, FTG Holdings at that time. And in a time he asked me like, do you guys want to come, come down to Durban for a meeting? I, I went down there and sat with him and he wanted me to introduce my clients to FTG Holdings um, as an investment firm. And obviously my first thing is show me your fact sheet, show me your results, show me your risk. I want to see the exposure everything. I want to see the whole thing before I do it. He showed me his positions, he showed me his risk, everything. And I was like, this guy knows what he's doing. Mm -hmm. he, understood, he came from a banking background, so he mm -hmm. understood the, the financials behind it. About two months in, we had about two million clients move to him. Um, and then he, he actually phoned us the one day. So he was watching, I do market updates for my, for my team. Okay. So every morning I wake up and I'll take you through the whole market. Or USD, I'm waiting for this. This is what I'm seeing. So I'll show you how I analyze mm -hmm. and what I see. So you'll see on my Instagram as well. I'll actually tell I'm waiting for a buy. So I'll wait for this to happen. Then I'll take the buy. Mm. So you saw the updates the whole time. And it's like, this guy understands the market. Mm. And then he phoned me back. And it's like, well, this isn't enough for me. Let's join us. Yeah. So he offered us a pretty decent salary at that yeah. time. And yeah. I was like, well, I'm, I'm 21 years old. Let's 22 years old at that time. Yeah. Let's take the salary and let's, let's do it. So the first trade that I took, the first month we joined FDG, we made about 34% okay. on a 1% risk um, formation. Okay. But I was killing it because he said, if I make more money, then I'm going to get more money. <laughs> so now that I wasn't happy with my salary, yeah. it was a lot of money, but I wanted more because yeah. I was still in that, that mindset. Yeah. And we actually killed it for, for quite a while. Um, then we bought shares in the company and we became mm -hmm. shareholders of the FG, FDG holdings. We... Then we branded to FTG Capital and started a new hedge fund. And yeah, then everything was going good. Um, salaries was good, money was good, profits was good, clients was happy. And then 2019, um, yeah, 2020, I think 29 March was the date. Yeah. He phoned me at, we were sleeping at Quentin's girlfriend's house at that time. He phoned me 4 a.m. And it's just like, I can hear the heavy breathing. Yeah. I can hear him not saying anything. I can hear him throwing up and I'm like, what's happening? And it's like just open the charts so i opened the charts um and i just see minus i think 10.5 million sure so we only gbp or sh gbp or short and okay. the market just went up so there's yeah. no your stop loss will just flash z yellow no broker will pick up that price or close your position at that yeah. that rate so we took out stop losses and yeah we had to figure out now what to do yeah so now i have to go while sitting with minus 10 million you have to go back to 2008 and check what the market crash did and yeah, yeah. and i'm like okay well we're fine we're gonna go back okay so now everybody's like discussing well if we ride this back down we're gonna make 10 million yeah. <laughs> so now i'm like thinking well we're minus 10 million i'm 22 years old like where yeah. do you where do you go where do you so now it was a back and forth conversation of three people trying to figure out are we taking it down mm. 
And at that time, we were sitting and waiting. Okay. So me and Quentin actually eventually moved back. Yeah. Not because of issues or anything, because we wanted comfort. Yeah, so yeah. we were sitting in this drawdown. We had nothing to do. We stopped our education. We didn't want to do anything. Yeah. So we're just sitting there at my mom's house. She's just bringing us food, and I'm just eating anxiety pills the whole time. <laughs> yeah. So we got to a point where we were running on minus 2.2 million. Okay. And that's when I phoned them, and I'm like, okay. So now you have to do that calculation. If we're going to run this for another nine months, or we can close it now, then we have nine months to make it back. Yeah. So then it's that thing, are, are we going to make it back and more, or are we going to lose more money? Mm. So we actually decided that taking that loss, we're going to make it back within the nine months. Yeah, so yeah. we took a 2.2 million rand loss. Sure. And that obviously takes a big knock in your, yeah, your yeah. mindset of yeah. staying, being here in life, and then all of a sudden taking that big knock and mm -hmm. Now you're afraid. Every time you just look yeah. look at the injury button, you're like, okay, what what if it happens again? Yeah. Because Corona only then started. Yeah, yeah. So now it was financial markets are crashing, companies mm. are closing down. Mm. So it was such a big factor, and we actually took about a year off of okay. trading. Uh, didn't enter one trade, didn't look at the charts, anything. Sure. Mm. Yeah, because obviously that really does kind of just mess with, with your, mm. your your psychology. Uh, how you view the market, how you view money as well, because like right now it's yeah. like, yo, I need to protect anything, yeah. anything that I have. But like, how do you eventually? So you took a break uh, from trading, right? Yeah. But you're back into trading now. Like, yeah, hundred percent. Right? I've been trading now for six months. For about. six months. But how did you get back into it? Because I think so many people take losses, especially I think a lot of the people mm. watching they take so many losses, and some of them just never come back. Yeah, so actually, in that same time, yeah. I had a 1.4 million account of my own money okay. that also blew on the same trade. Oh. So for me at that time, I didn't have a trading account, um, so I didn't even want to fund. Mm. So we came back, we, we traveled a lot, um, moved around, just trying to find the happy space again, that place where you're motivated again. Yeah. And what I did, I started with like a 20K account and just didn't feel it. Like it was the same thing over and over. I couldn't press that button to sure. enter the trade. So then I said to Quentin, let's find $100 accounts and let's actually look at that accounts and just trade one cent. Mm. So just focus on that, that consistency. Basically remind yourself how good you are. Yeah. And that's what we did for about four months. Um, people were coming, now we're staying in this big house in Silver Lakes and we're trading $100 <laughs> accounts. <laughs> They're like, what are you, how are you affording this house? And I'm like, no, it's just trust me, this is something that you don't understand at the moment. <laughs> and yeah, we were trading $100 accounts for six months. Yeah. And then we got back into it, we moved to Durban. Um, we're staying there for a while and then when we moved back to Polokwane, we got back into trading full swing, funded big accounts, started trading mm. and, and everything started running again from there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. sure. And now currently we, we did a rebranding of, um, so FTG closed down Yeah, yeah. Um, and due to personal things and we started a new company. So I have mm. my own company now, Quebec Wealth Management, which okay. is London based. Okay. And so now I'm doing fund managing again for about three months. Okay. Um, yeah, three yeah. months of profit, so it's, oh, yeah, it's good, that's, yeah. That's great. <laughs> but obviously, as a fund manager, uh, you've got a strategy that you're using, mm -hmm. obviously. Uh, uh, what, what's the importance of, like, sticking with a strategy that you have and not necessarily... Because, like, I think what we get so caught up in is, like, trying, chasing the holy grail. Yeah. Trying to find that time. one strategy <laughs> that works, and then, obviously, that <laughs> it, it doesn't work. I actually have a funny story. Yeah. I have a... On my so I build a whole members era for all my students oh, okay. where it's like 200 plus videos, everything is made by me. Yeah. So it takes you from everything and then in the end it says strategy. Mm. So I more than every, everyone understand that what works for me won't work for you and yeah. won't work for him, etc. So okay. everybody has different ways of seeing the market, analyzing mm. the market. Mm. So there's this one video, the holy grail strategy. There's nothing in there. <laughs> <laughs> you open a video and stay at the black chart for 20 minutes because I'm like, in the end I'm like, I hope you guys are happy because there's no holy grail strategy. Yeah, yeah, it's not that that's thing. so true. So with strategy-wise, I always believe that people just put a twist to that. Okay. So strat the word strategy became a selling point in okay. the industry. Oh, yeah. So it's now like you, you're selling the camera strat, and now all of mm. a sudden people are buying it because they don't know what it is. Mm. If you say you're selling the trend line strategy, people like trend lines. They're yeah. like, oh, yeah, but here's everything. Yeah. But now if you're saying the something else yeah, strategy, yeah. the fund manager strategy, yeah, then people yeah. are like, yes, I need this. Yeah. So for me, strategy is where people get it wrong. They think it's about the technicals you use in that. For us as a, as a H fund, well, soon to be H fund investment firm, our strategy is money management, risk management, mm -hmm. and obviously everything we look at, what pairs we're trading, yeah. what times we're trading, um, what 
pairs can't be trade together. What mm -hmm. are we looking at? So basically rules of trading, yeah. risk management, money yeah. management. How many positions can we put in? Um, how many trades can we have at the same time? So that's for us. The analyzing part for me doesn't have anything to do with strategy. Okay. Um, I mean, the market's going to go up and down from a certain point if you have analysis in or not. So yeah. for us, we have different managers, different people from different perspectives. Mm. So this guy will analyze in a way, I'll analyze in a way. Mm. So we put it together. If we all see the trade, we see the trade. I won't ask him for his analysis. If he says, I see it, then I'm, I'm happy. Yeah. So I saw the trade, he saw the trade, I'm happy. Yeah. So risk management is probably the most important thing. Yeah, it's good. I was actually coming yeah. to risk management. So what are like some of the golden rules that, of risk management that you have or that you'd give to people? Well, I think people need to understand is, uh, once again, there's a difference between risk management and money management. Okay, yeah. So people always see these guys flipping accounts. Mm. Um, I've been there. I've flipped accounts 2K to like 60K. I've done it. I love doing it. The rush behind it is, yeah. is quite fun. Um, so risk management for me, start always off with 1% risk. So becoming a full-time trader, successful trader is not about the money at the start. Yes, the end goal is money. Nobody can tell me you're not trading with, for mm. anything else than money. And then it's a space of money. So start with 1%. The thing about risk management, risk management is you need to feel comfortable. If you don't feel comfortable entering a trade, if you're risking 30%, you can take three trades and you're done. Mm. If you can risk $1 on 100 trades, you have 100, even if you lose everything, now you can work on 100 mistakes you made mm. and you can learn from that 100 mistakes. Yeah. Now if you take three trades, you can only look at the three trades and be like, well, what did I do wrong? Okay, I turned around the market, turned around the market three times. Mm. But now looking at 100 different mistakes, you're like, well, 100 things to learn from. Yeah. It's the same thing. If you interview three guys, people will like, have this opinion about industry. Mm -hmm. If you interview 100 guys, then you'll have 100 opinions. Mm. So you'll see different perspectives and different views. Yeah. And that's the same thing with risk management. Okay. So where money management comes in is account flipping. Mm -hmm. So people don't always get it. They see the same 10K account, for example. Then the guy makes 100K. People don't talk about that. Yeah. yeah. Um, and for me, I want to talk about yeah. that because that's so interesting. Yeah. And what people don't get is, Remember the guy putting in 10K, 10K for him is like 10 Rand for some people. Mm. So he has 100K to trade with NASDAQ. All he does is he allocates 10K account to, different, to 10 different accounts. So if a NASDAQ buy pops up, you'll take the buy full margin, mm -hmm. they call it the barcode strat, bar strat, they just yeah. line up that increase <laughs> and they take it up and they make 10K to 200K easily. Mm. But if he loses that account, he'll wait for a lower dip and then do it again. So then he lost 10K, but he made 200K. Mm. So it's still risk management in the end, but it's just money management. Yeah. So it's also a good way to trade, but take your account, if you have a thousand rand, break it up into ten accounts, and then have hundred rand and hundred rand. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, okay, yeah, that's <laughs> great. Uh, so as a trader, I think obviously we don't know uh, where the market is really going to. Nobody ever truly knows for sure where, where the, the market, market is right. really going, but like, obviously we can predict. Mm. Uh, obviously, that is our job. Obviously, to, to predict, predict the where where the market is going. But like, obviously, there can be uncertainties along the way. But like, how do you re reduce those uncertainties in your trading? Well, I feel that's time in the market. Yeah. Um, I always explain it. If the reason people like technicals, mm -hmm. um, you'll get guys with like ten different technicals on. Mm. So for me, the way I break down the market, I start with support resistance, my trend line, my fib, whatever it might be. Um, so where confidence is made, that's where everything comes together. That's where price buys and price sells. Mm. Okay, you, the institutions, the banks are also trading with AIs and that AI is based on patterns, on mm. previous positions, etc. So where a trader finds comfort is where all his analysis lines up. So unfortunately, the market doesn't work that way. So for me, it's always waiting for the shift of momentum. So put in your technicals, wait for the market, don't try and get the best entry. Mm. I actually had a mentorship with one of my students last night and he's like, what's the difference between a best entry and a better entry? I'm like, the best entry is trying to find that bottom, just buy when it's moving, Nasdaq's dropping like crazy like yeah. yesterday. Yeah. People are just buying, <laughs> low account, buy, yeah. low account, yeah. buy. Yeah. Where I'm just chilling and I'm waiting for the shift of momentum and then take the buy. Mm. Same thing with the sell, so always wait for your shift of momentum. Mm. And where, where it becomes comfortable is you finding consistency. But you will never find consistency if you're constantly stressing. So it will all comes down to risk management. Yeah. If, I'm, if I know on the fund I'm risking 0.25%, I sleep like a baby. 
So I thought if I wake up tomorrow morning, I, I lose 0.25%, I'm like, okay, well, I'm, I'm happy. Yeah. But if you wake up and you're running on minus $500 and you have $600 in your account, you're like, well, what's happening? Now you're finding your mentor, you're finding your friend, everybody needs to analyze this market now together. And <laughs> As so if it's going to change the thing. <laughs> As if it's going to change if you find your friend or your mentor. And it's like, no, I told you it's not a buy, but yeah, but it's dropping. And I'm like, yeah, that means it's selling. It's not buying, it's dropping. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. Sure. Wow. <laughs> Um, okay, uh, so what's your biggest loss that you've taken? But I think we've t spoken about that. Yeah. Right? It was the two point uh, personal loss. Was that personal two? loss was 1.4 million. 1.4, yeah. <clears throat> so it was a GBP or trade. Okay. And on the fund, we lost 2.2 million. Yeah, yeah. So, but, but what was mm. the biggest lesson you actually took from that experience? Well, at that time, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think anything about the market. I hated the market. Yeah. I was like, okay, maybe I shouldn't have dropped out and maybe I should have listened to my parents and my friends and. Because now you're seeing all your friends working at the yeah. from home at coronavirus is on and yeah. now I'm sitting there with not doing anything. But yeah. the biggest lesson I learned is obviously focusing on the longer term. Okay. So always managing your risk, number one. Mm -hmm. And number two, obviously having different incomes, different mm -hmm. streams of income. So having your cryptos, having yeah. your, your forex and always having that backup. Mm -hmm. So let's say, for example, I had 100,000 rand in my account or let's say 500, 300k, 300k, 300k. So let's say I blew my 300,000, market went up. In the market crash, I funded another 300K, sold at the top. I would have made 2 million. Mm. Now I lost 1.4 million, but because I didn't manage my risk, I had all my money in one trading account. Yeah. So I didn't break up my accounts, I had no plan. Um, so that's what, what, what I learned most is to have a more set plan mm -hmm. and always prepare for something like a market crash. Yeah. Even today, there's a big possibility that there will be an, another market crash. People always see uh, 10 years from now. Mm -hmm. um, 2018, 2020, so it's 12 years, but with the current economic conditions, I mean, we can have a market crash tomorrow, yeah, which is yeah. highly likely to happen if you're looking at what's happening in the markets. Mm. Um, so prepare for the worst. Mm. <laughs> that's, that's my thing. And once again, if you look, let's say you take a NASDAQ buy okay. um, and you have all your money in one account. So now your downside risk isn't only that $50 stop loss anymore. Your downside risk actually is 13000 12,800 when as is now. That's actually your downside risk at the moment. Mm. Because if the market crashes today, we can keep going down. So you need to be withstand that drawdown then. Even if you're trading with the stop loss, the broker won't take your stop loss with that instant market crash. So you need to prepare for that things as well. Mm. And that's the one thing I didn't prepare for. Yeah. So there's different ways obviously of doing it. Yeah, like yeah. I said, if you have 100K, put in 10K in each account yeah. and trade with that. Because if it blows, then you have nine more 10K accounts to, to buy it with. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, <laughs> no, that's great. That's great. And what's your? I'm gonna say your craziest trade. I don't, I don't want to say your best trade, but like your craziest trade, <laughs> where you sit back and like, yeah, the, this is one of the most. This memorable. is what I'm doing. Why I'm doing it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We actually went. Uh, we rented a house just up the road, actually on the left hand side. Oh yeah. So it was my Francia, Quentin, Quentin's girlfriend, Francia's wife, my brother and his and his wife um, at that time. I saw his wife, <laughs> but uh, yeah. we all rented this house and I was sitting in my brother's talking to me and everybody's having a good time and I'm like, I, I need to focus. Yeah. So while everybody's having a good time, me and Franchi are sitting behind the chart, we're waiting for USDJ for our sound. So we're waiting and waiting. Sometimes you wait for three hours, even mm. if it's close to entry, we'll still wait for three hour confirmation, whatever it is. Yeah. So now we're sitting there and waiting and we just hit, hit it, I think 120 lots sell on, on USDJ for our. Sure. And as we entered, I'm like, well, we can go and eat out now. And my brother's like, are oh, you just going to leave it? I'm like, well, this is what we do. The risk is calculated. Yeah. Everything is calculated. There's nothing to do. Sitting and start, staring at the chart, it's <laughs> not going to change the direction. Yeah. And we went to Guy Fury to go and eat out. And when we got there, we were running on 560,000 Rand profits. Sure. So I'd, it was probably fundamental came in, coming out as well. Yeah. So obviously, technical-wise, the market won't move that fast. Okay, yeah, yeah. So yeah. We, we closed about 860K in 24 hours. Sure. So that was our biggest biggest trade. Yeah. Personally, my biggest um, trade was 240,000 in, in two days. Sure. So I actually yeah, yeah. entered after interest rates, okay. entered the market and took a big, big pullback. Okay. And in five days, I rode the market down and made 240,000. Sure. Yeah. But that, that's with risk management, everything. Oh, that's my worth 20, risk 40K. management. Yeah. And wait, went with my trip to Cape Town and just sat yeah, there and just yeah. enjoyed life for, yeah. for two days alone. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, no, no, but that's great. So coming to the end, oh, this is actually the end of the interview right here. <laughs> so yeah, thank you so much. Uh, oh, I, thanks, man. Appreciate it. I really enjoyed. You dropped so many nuggets. <laughs> right there. Honestly, like I'm, I'm really inspired by your story and how everything just came or, came about. Uh, so what kind of, what are you currently doing right now, business right now, business wise? Well, I have obviously the, the, the investment firm yeah, in yeah. Quebec Wealth Management. That is okay. basically say my baby. Um, mm -hmm. Like I said, my goal is to become the youngest hedge fund manager of a billion dollars. Yeah. Um, then we do have Quebec Forex Institute. Um, so we are an education company. We've been in the space for about four years. Um, so once again, everything we do there is different. Mm. Um, I don't sell you a PDF. I don't sell you a WhatsApp group. Um, so everything is system based. Mm. You want education, you get the education. Mm. Um, you want mentorship, I actually show up myself every Wednesday yeah. at seven, we have mentorship, we discuss trades, we discuss technicals, whatever you need. Mm. We have private mentorship where you book one-on-one -on -one sessions with me every week. Mm. Um, we have market updates, so we have different things there as well. Mm -hmm. And our main focus once again is to help everyone what they're struggling with. Mm. Um, in the end, selling just a course is, is not where trading is at. Um, people always laugh at me when I say we have a 12 months course, then they're like, no, I want three days. Then I'm like, I'm not going to learn the biggest market in the world in three days. Yeah. So what we want is the guys that want to sit for 12 months and mm. actually learn the art of trading. Mm. Um, because now the testimonial will be better after 12 months. Yeah. After three days, that guy will write the best testimonial because he's new to trading. He'll be like, yes, I enjoyed it so much and yeah, I learned yeah. all this stuff. Yeah. But after 12 months, the testimonial becomes real mm. because he can say, well, I made it. Yeah. Okay, this guy was the best man I've ever had for 12 months. So that's what we want to keep doing and that's what everything we put out is always is being real. Mm -hmm. um, if I'm going through a dip, I'll put out a video on, on my members area and say, well, guys, I'm going through a dip. Something happened with my family. I'm not going to do market updates. Mm. Everybody understands that I can't just put out things because you're paying for it. I'll just postpone your payments for like two weeks and then we'll... We'll let it run. So, mm. and then we're also developing a, <laughs> a trading app that yeah, we've been yeah. developing for about two years. Um, like I said, it's it's something big that will get the industry together. Mm. Um, that will obviously help the clients. Um, mm. For me, I want the focus to be on the traders. Mm. Um, I think a lot of people call forex a scam, and I still don't think there's a guy out there scamming people. There's not a trader that scams people. His education might not be that good. Um, doesn't mean he's scamming you, he's just not putting out a great course. And a lot of people are doing it with a good heart, putting out a course, but it might just not be as good as he thinks it is. Yeah. Um, but there's nothing to it. Yeah. So yeah, and then also developing a few other <laughs> companies outside trading as well. Mm. For me, it's all about entrepreneurship and I want yeah. to be an entrepreneur. It's not about yeah. the money of how much money I make, it's how many things I can create that solves problems in, in South Africa especially. Mm. Yeah. yeah, that's yeah. beautiful. <laughs> All the best with all your uh, ventures. Thanks, uh, man. I appreciate up, uh, it. Yeah, no, thank you very much for coming. Uh, you actually came from uh, from Bulukwane yeah. to <laughs> Pretoria. And yeah, just for us to shoot this interview, we really do appreciate that. Uh, uh, thanks for your time as well. No, it's a pleasure. <laughs> anyway, guys, thank you so much uh, for watching. Uh, I'm sitting here with Ruan. Ru 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 <laughs> <laughs> I'm sitting here with Ruan. And then if you uh, will leave all this uh, information in the description below, uh, also on the screen as well, you guys will see it. If you guys want to reach out to him, uh, if you need anything <laughs> in regards to trading. And then my name is Nobile Tambani from Top Trader South Africa. And guys, thank you so much for watching. And we're out. Thanks, man.